So now that we know that the Ryzen 1600 does actually overclock pretty well with a solid cooling solution, um, in my case, my H100 IV2, let's find out how this stock Wraith Spire cooler overclocks with the 1600 and determine whether you really need to spend any extra money on an aftermarket cooler. So for those of you that don't know, this is the Wraith Spire cooler and it comes in the box of the Ryzen 5 1600 as well as the Ryzen 5 1500X along with the Ryzen 7 1700 in case you hopped on that train earlier this year. Now, as far as stock coolers go, the Wraith Spire is actually quite beefy. It comes with a five blade fan, all of which the fan blades are rather deeply swept, so it should be scooping quite a bit of air there. And it comes with a copper core on the base, which will help get heat away from the CPU as fast as possible. In addition, anecdotally speaking, it's also one of the quietest stock coolers I've ever heard. In fact, inside the Define R5, which admittedly is more of an optimized case for silence, you barely notice it at all unless you're actually listening for it. And if you've ever used one of those old stock coolers that came with the FX processors or the APUs that AMD shipped in their last generation of processors five years ago, then you'll know that those were extremely out loud and sounded like little jet engines inside your computer. Now, if you remember before Ryzen 5 launched, I said that you may want to pick up a Ryzen 5 1600 over the 1600X because you'll save $30, they'll overclock to nearly the same exact point at their maximum overclock, and with the 1600 coming with a solid stock cooler, you'll save additional money by not having to provide your own cooling solution like you would on the 1600X. So now let's check out how this Wraith Spire cooler performs on the 1600 compared to the same exact processor running the Corsair H100 IV2, and then I'll give you some wrap up thoughts. Okay, so here we are in CPU Z right before I run Cinebench here. You'll notice up here we have 1.4 volts. It's actually a little bit below that right now, but as soon as I start the actual Cinebench run, it'll pop right up to 1.4 volts maybe slightly higher than that but it is set manually at 1.4 and then down here you'll see the clock speed is running at 3.842 megahertz uh, with the multiplier set at 38.5 so let's go ahead and run this benchmark and see what kind of Cinebench scores we get time. The Wraith Spire cooler does an excellent job on the 1600 and I imagine it would do a similarly good job on the 1500X. If I were a consumer that is budget minded, I would maintain my first assertion before Ryzen 5 ever launched that the 1600 is the chip for you if you're looking at one of the six core parts. And that's because you get a great little cooler for a cheaper price than the 1600X comes for, it's gonna get you to very near the performance you would get with the 1600X and an aftermarket cooler, and you'll save a lot of money. After you factor in the cost of an aftermarket cooler on top of the already $30 price tag difference, you're talking about saving between $50 and $60, and you do have a solid cooler anyways. So I think for the vast majority of people, it's a no-brainer. Get the 1600 if you're looking at the six core 12 thread parts, and just overclock. If you want a bigger overclock, you can always invest in a better cooling solution, or you can just uh, do it to save either temperature or voltage and be able to step your overclock down a little bit on those two metrics. But there's really not a big compelling reason to go for the 1600X from my perspective. 
Well, that's it, folks. If you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, all those things down below. Also, comment and tell me what you thought of this uh, sort of comparison between the stock cooler and the AIO solution. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. I will let YouTube queue up the normal videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.